Mm -mm. Last one. <laughs> up. Steady. <laughs> up, up. I'm gonna be so overreach by this week. Holy fuck. What's up, guys? It's me, Dr. Mike. And I'm all alone here. My friends decided not to join me. Oh, wait. It's Jared Feather and Charlie Jung. It's Team Full Rom in the house. We have today's video for you, which is leg training. I'm two weeks out of a bodybuilding show. Charlie's three weeks out. Jared's three years out because he's moving up from classic into the open. Holy crap, watch out. This video is going to be leg training. It's our Monday session. This is the first video of six videos. We're gonna be doing every single training day as a video and interviews, a little bit of insight onto how we feel about the prep process, training, diet, motivation, psychology, etc. Please tag in, tune along. If you have questions, throw them in the comments. If you really have detailed questions and want us to look over your training, give you video feedback, come and join Team Full Rom on Facebook. We're doing it big. Folks, let's get started with leg training. See ya. I'm up, bro. There's dog hair in this gym. You're white trash. You grew up around dog hair. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Jim? <laughs> Here's what's on deck, as the kids say. Hack squats to begin with. Then we have some lightweight lunges right after hacks are over to push a bit more metabolite. And um, it's, it's a quad and glute exercise at that point because your quads are so pre-exhausted they're a lot of times limiting factor after hacks. And then we have leg curls, lying leg curls, and then some calf raises after. So right now we start hack squats. And for me, I'm personally doing a top set of 15 and then 13, and then 11, and then probably like 10 reps, that's planned. It's just one rep more than last time for this entire mesocycle leading up to the show. Just adding a rep, no load, to not expose my tissues to greater forces because at this state of show prep, it's a little bit more injurious than I'd like to trade off, but with adding reps, you still get a bigger stimulus. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm doing slow control eccentrics and full deep long pauses to further reduce my injury. Now here's the thing, here's where stimulus to fatigue ratio comes in. Not everyone responds best to that. Charlie is doing slightly faster eccentrics because super slow ones actually hurt his knees. He's taking a slightly more gentle pause because a deeper pause hurts his knees more. Jared has his own idi idi idiosyncrasies. So at the end of the day, you have to do what's best for you. Just make sure the muscle is getting stimulated and the joints are getting hurt as little as possible. And you're probably well on your way. Let's get the work done. I'm like, Hey folks, welcome to episode one of our pre-contest training series. Of course, we're training legs today, and we also have a bit of a conversation. All these convos in these next few episodes are going to be about competing in bodybuilding. Today's conversation is going to be, what really are the big differences between just training and dieting for yourself to get really lean, even super, super lean, even stage lean. And what is the difference between that and actually prepping for a show? Charlie, give us a, give us a start because you've done some fat loss phases before just to get lean and you've recently started competing. You're in prep number two for your career. The timeline, the show has a very specific 
date that you have to come and show up for uh, and be in the condition you want to be in. Uh, luckily for a fat loss phase, um, you know, I wouldn't say it's completely arbitrary. That you could have a vacation you, coming up or something. Exactly. If you only have like a certain leanness target, even if it's show lean, um, you don't necessarily have to make it by a specific date. Uh, but a show, you know, it's then or not, you know, it's now or never, you have much less leeway in terms of how your diet goes. Fat loss phase where you don't have a, you know, a certain date, that's fine. You can just get back on and, you know, still reach your target. But for a show, if you, you know, go off plan, you, know, you you want to still get to that leanness you have to be, you have to make it up somehow. A bodybuilding show, you got to peak, and not just in your own time, but on the show line, show timeline, and that means at 11 a.m. or, well, they say 11, but really it's 2 p.m. Uh, you got to be as lean as you can be and as full as you can be and as dry as you can be, and that means the last week and maybe even a few weeks, you have to attend to those things. Yeah, that's a good point. I was going to basically touch on the pressure that it comes with competition and how often people generally beat themselves up. So this is a difference that shouldn't be a difference. It just happens to be, especially when people are highly competitive. There's a lot of like beating yourself up and, and feeling like you're not gonna make it to your goal and things like that. If you're just getting lean to get lean, I mean, like you said, it's so simple to like, eh, I can macro track today and be fine. Uh, a lot of people, even when you're show prepping, you could probably do that. But whenever you start to do that, you're kind of like a little more neurotic about it. And like, oh no, I can't, I can't have, to have these foods. So it's, it's definitely <laughs> this weird psychological pressure that people put on themselves um, that they should try to stray away from. But just caveat to all this, I don't think getting show lean just to get show lean is smart. Uh, I'm just gonna put that out there. I don't, I don't understand it. Photo shoot, I'm just gonna say a photo shoot stands for competition as well. If you're getting photo shoot lean, competition lean, whatever it is for some specific goal, uh, that's the only time you should dip into those body fats. Otherwise, what the hell are you doing? Um, getting show lean just to see if you can with no competition in sight is kind of strange to me. Um, so maybe don't do that a lot. If you're gonna do it, don't do it a lot. <laughs> Try to make progress and, and enjoy the results, enjoy the dieting process, enjoy the process of training and, and stuff. And, have fun. Fuck. Hack squats are done. Right after hack squats, no rest. I just did a set of lunges. So did Charlie. The idea is while the metabolites are in the muscle, you continue to push the muscle with lighter loads. You stay close to failure longer, and being close to failure probably causes a lot of hypertrophy. This way we can uh, have a really good stimulus without a ton of fatigue, because the overall load for lunges can be very low. That's why I only lunge with the bar. Charlie and I used to do lunges as own free exercise. We were doing 200 plus pounds, and uh, look pretty unstable, so a little bit more injurious. Two sets of lunges, and uh, you know, one set right after, and then another set maybe a minute two later. Say something nice about Mr. Chris Duffin while you're in there. Fuck you, Chris, for making this part. <laughs> oh, there you go, big chest. Oh yeah. 24. Up, up. 25. Chris. 26. This is Barso. Comfortable. 27. Well, I'm so uncomfortable. 28. Everyone should go. Bye, this. 29. Bar. Last one. <laughs> up. Steady. <laughs> up, up.
Thank you, Jerry. I take it all back. Fuck you, Chris. Uh, I hate we're this back to that. that was a quick evolution. Lunges are done. Leg curl time. Four sets of leg curls. I'm gonna do 20 reps on each set, which means the first one's gonna be like one from failure. Of course, the others, how the hell am I supposed to hit 20 if I'm fatigued? Well, I can't, but do it through my reps. Resting two or three seconds, maybe four or five seconds between each mini set. You add up all the mini sets and get to 20 each time. So it's basically 80 total repetitions with maybe like 10 or more approaches to failure the whole time. Brutal, great way to do isolation exercises that typically you'd have to do a lot of sets and uh, rest a ton. This way you can get them done faster, probably just as effectively, if not more so, because you can really sequester metabolites. We're gonna do leg curls, then we'll finish up with calf raises. <sighs> Let's get it done. I just watch you hamstring curl all day, Mike. did my first show, I treated it more as a, I'm just going to try to get really lean. And I didn't treat it as much as a contest prep. And I uh, made all sorts of mistakes. I looked terrible. And I had gotten pretty lean before and posted pictures and the response was super positive. And when I put myself on stage out of shape, the response was insanely negative. And I was like, oh, I just wasn't really ready for that because there's this idea that other people hold that if you step on stage, you have to be worthy of the stage. And there's something to that. There's definitely something to that. And even if there's nothing to that in the real objective world, there is something to that in people's heads. And when you especially believe that- compet Like competing themselves. Yes. And especially at a high level. Yes. People will think- that. People expect you to be at least as good, if not better. And especially now being in the, we're pretty, prevalent in the hypertrophy realm and yes. the contest prep realm and things like that. It's yes. like, good luck. You sure. step on stage out of shape. For sure. How do you decide if you are ready to take a crack at the stage? My Jared? first, my first is objective psychological measures. Always, every single time. Which one? Like when you dieted down and you got really lean, like you said, um, what was your relationship with food like? Were you stressed day to day? What would, like how stressed were you on a scale of one to 10 with what you're, like with food each, each and every day, how strict was the diet, things like that. So it's like, were you having like bad thoughts about your physique? Were you having bad thoughts about like people around you? Did you handle it very well? Did you handle the deficit well? Um, there's just like, you're not ready if you could diet it down to 8% and all you could think about was food. You were constantly judging yourself in the mirror. You stopped enjoying the process um, and like, all the things that come with getting lean really, really affected your mood. Like no libido, being hungry sometimes, sleep gets goes to shit. Irritable and nasty to other people. A little nasty to other people. To yourself. Those things are just, you gotta learn how to handle those a little bit before you go into the real, like the trenches of contest prep or it just kind of gets worse. Leg curls are done. So we're gonna hack squats, lunges, leg curls. What would legs be without, as my Jewish people say, caves. Oi, my calves. So calves, we're gonna be doing calves on the belt squat. You guys will see the setup in a sec. Sometimes we do my reps, sometimes straight sets. I'll be doing my reps and uh, it's good stuff. Just make sure, keep your leg straight or almost completely straight. Get a deep stretch every single time. Peak contraction, deep stretch, milk it. If you don't get a deep stretch on the calf, you're robbing yourself of much of the growth. So tend to think that most people respond to relatively high reps well in the calves, at least on the first set, or otherwise a load that's lighter than 75% of your calf 1RM, which is an important number to know. But uh, yeah, sets of you know 15 to 25 on a first set, usually rest maybe 10 seconds, 15 seconds, hit it again, again, again. Your reps drop all the way down to like five, call it quits. Of course, mind your volume landmarks. If you already have a huge pump and your calves are super weak, time to call it. Uh, another thing about calves is we train quads and hams twice a week generally. Calves, a lot of times we train three, sometimes even four times a week if they're ready to recover. It's all on you based on how much volume you can put in, how much late onset soreness you have or how your performance peaks. Calf training cannot be done by most people once a week. 
Most of you have Jared Feather genetics. You do calves multiple times a week because they tend to heal really fast. Let's get these calves done. We'll do the outro and call it quits. Fuck. <laughs> Cramp? Huh? You cramping? Uh, no. Just a lot of lactic acid. Folks, workout number one of the week in the books. Legs, the rest of the day we do cardio, rest, eat, do work. Come back tomorrow, we're just gonna be back in the AM with some forearms and the PM, shoulders and biceps. How are you guys feeling? A little too fatigued for that workout. <laughs> a little too fatigued? Yeah, that I was think, a lot, huh? I think it was a little I'll be, I'll be very much. by the end of this week. Yeah, yeah. And that's what good athletes run on fear and pessimism. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs> fuck that bitch. Fuck that bitch. <laughs> fuck oh, fuck up. She thinks she's better than me. She thinks she's better than all of us. <laughs> <laughs>